My name is Michal Kravel Tovi. I'm a senior lecturer or associate professor at Tel Aviv University, the Department of Sociology and Anthropology, and I'm participating at the Status of Converts uh, conference. My name is Elad Kaplan. I'm the director of the Munmudin Center for Jewish and Democratic Law at Bar Ilan University. I have helped many converts through the process of conversion and been part of drafting uh, the conversion bill in 2013, and I've assisted with uh, the conversion bills which have been written uh, since, and I'm here at the conference about the status of converts. So Michal Kravel Tovi, you're an anthropologist, and uh, you, are, you wrote a book uh, which name is uh, When the State Wings, the Performance of Jewish Conversion in Israel. Uh, was uh, awarded twice in 2018, uh, second prize of Clifford Girls Prize Award, and also Jordan Schnitzer Book Award. Uh, so in this book, you are obviously like uh, dealing with the process of conversion in Israel. Right. So that's the main uh, <laughs> subject of this uh, conference, conference today. Um, how would you sum up the main stakes, like for people who don't know about this process of conversion and the stakes, which are those principal uh, stakes okay. in the okay. process of conversion today? What makes debates in the Israeli society? Okay, so as an ethnographer, I try to work not only at the macro level, uh, of politics and debate and public discourse, but also in real life and everyday procedures and behind the scenes uh, events that, you know, usual people do not have a chance uh, to get to see. I will try to sum up my work uh, under the title, which is When the State Wins, and to explain how it helps me, I think, to conceptualize what I see in contemporary conversion. Uh, there is um, a customary trope very negative one to say that conversion is only about wink-wink. Ah, everybody is lying on all sides. When people want to marginalize conversion or to discredit conversion, they would usually say, this is giurei kritza, this is the term in Hebrew. And it was used by multiple social and political actors uh, to really discredit conversion as a valid procedure. Uh, and I'm trying to walk with this kind of language because as an ethnographer, I build on how people, I draw on how people think and talk about their own engagement. But I think differently about winking. Usually when people talk about wink-wink conversion, they talk about lies, about the fact that converts lie for sure to the rabbis because they have no intention to comply to adhere in the long run uh, with Jewish law and they also they only do it for a formality. And uh, some rabbis are accused of being complicit in these wink-wink relationships in knowingly facilitating conversions that are less than ideal in terms of sincerity. So I'm trying to work with this notion of wink-wink uh, but think about differently. Um, following Clifford Geertz, who is an ethnographer, who is a cultural anthropologist, I think about winking as an interactive gesture between people. It's a sign that people take in order to be part of a conversation. And it's very impl implicit and nuanced, but it's still very powerful or present. If I wink to you, you understand something else. And what I'm trying to explain and show ethnographically is how conversion agents do not ask converts to lie, but they wink, wink at them, teach them how to perform the persona of a, a sincere convert. Uh, they do not ask them to pretend. They actually interrogate them all the time, sometimes even abusively, uh, to make sure that they are sincere. But at the same time, they teach them. Conversion teachers teach converts how to perform, how to behave correctly, to, be, to have like a believable enough persona so that the rabbis at the rabbinic court would be able to endorse this project. So I'm trying to think about this wink-wink, which is also a win-win, I think, in a way, because... The converts want to be part, to be included in the Jewish people and to be full-fledged Israeli citizens. 
and the rabbis want to include those people. And they use this concept of winking to think about the impossibilities of conversion in real life. I think about the agent on the street, like the bureaucrat level, like the, the, the rabbinic judge who needs now to encounter someone, and he owes to a very exclusive rabbinic tools the way that he takes them and interprets. At the same time, he adheres and he, he, he believes in a very inclusive national mission. So how does he walk within this like incongruent forces of being both inclusive and inclusive? Or for example, the conversion procedure is supposed to be focused on the individual, but what many of the conversion agents actually think about is about the population, about the public. So how do they move between individuals and about and the uh, collective? And I'm trying to show how by winking on all sides and to everyone else in these multiple in encounters, they manage to live decently within this kind of, this set of paradoxes. It's not perfect, it's not harmonic in any way, but they try to do it more manageable. So you, uh, Elad Kaplan, you are uh, more on the side of activism, if I can say so. You are a lawyer uh, originally, and uh, you are, uh, so you want to tell it better than me, like head of the Menno Matim Center at Barilan University. Uh, and if I can sum up, like you are here to create uh, more dialogue, dialogue between the religious aspect and the democratic aspect of Israel. Um, can you uh, say to me what, it, what are for you the main stakes of conversion today in Israel? What is it problematic? What, is, what it, does it make debate? So conversion sits at the essence of Israel's identity as a Jewish state. Uh, when the Iron Curtain fell, almost a million uh, Jews came to Israel, some of them with a strong Jewish identity, but not Jewish according to ha halakha according to Jewish law. And when they come to Israel, they're part of the Jewish community. And there's a question, what is the responsibility of the state in, of Israel in providing them the services needed in order to convert to Judaism? And this has been going on for a few decades. And at many uh, different points, the conversion courts, the religious establishment has become more stringent and closed. So many of those who would like to go through the process are not succeeding to complete the process. And if we look at the data, then we can see that only one out of every four people who start studying for a state-sponsored conversion actually succeeds to complete the, the process. And there's several questions which are basically interwined. Conversion is both a personal, a communal, and also a legal and a national issue. And the question is, when we have a Jewish state with an in-gathering of, uh, of, uh, of exiles, then should we provide conversion services which are more open, attentive, and uh, recognizing the diverse needs of the Jewish people? Within the ultra-Orthodox sphere, there's many people who would like to see a closed system which is more narrow and does not allow people to complete the service, uh, the, the, complete the conversion process. So um, I think that what's developed over the past few years is two different questions. There's one question, which is, should conversions be more lenient and more stringent? And then there's another, uh, another question, is should conversions be more centralized or more uh, decentralized? Should we have one conversion court, which everybody has to go through, one Israel, one nation, one conversion process, kind of creating a melting pot of Jewish identities? Or should we have a diverse system with different conversion courts that people can approach, maybe having different interpretations of Jewish law and Jewish halakha? And the second question sits at the basis of the political and legal discourse of conversion, including the current efforts of the Ministry of Interior, uh, the Ministry of Religious Services, to have a solution for, uh, for conversions. So, uh, as an anthropologist, would you say that you, you uh, in your field work, uh, Michal, did you uh, find those two questions as the main questions also? I think those questions were extremely important and present, and they had all kinds of repercussions in real life, like those big questions, and sometimes very abstract and not tangible, 
uh, became translated into real pragmatic dilemmas of people who need to help to facilitate conversion as teachers or as rabbinical judges or in the ritual mikveh. But because they walk in real life, the real pressures take a different color or different uh, intensity. So, for example, if a teacher needs to walk between like thinking of being more statist, more centralized, and less centralized. So he walks in a very particular setting in which like he interprets and reinterprets and you his own stance. Or if he needs to find his own position on the spectrum between being lenient to being stringent. So he may even has his own ideology that he like adhere to, he takes very seriously, but in real life he sometimes diverts from this issue because you know life is moving and complicated and it like it uh, like it makes them co like confront real dilemmas so sometimes they say one thing and they will do a very very different thing because they will need to just find a solution for real life problem um, would you have something to uh, add maybe like uh, for, for the, those real life uh, examples of those uh, contradictions and uh, the cases maybe so everything comes down to real people and real stories. Just one, one story is the story of uh, uh, Michael. He's a, um, born in the former Soviet Union. Uh, he had a Jewish father, but not a Jewish mother, but he saw himself as being part of the Jewish people and was related to by others, sometimes in an anti-Semitic way, as being the, the Jew. And he married uh, a woman who also had a Jewish father and not a Jewish mother, made Aliyah to Israel, had two kids in Israel. And he didn't think initially of converting to Judaism, but when his father got ill, he said, when I, he said to Michael, when I die, I want someone to be able to say Kaddish, the Jewish prayer, uh, for, for me. And uh, Michael started the conversion process and studied for over a year. And eventually he wasn't able to complete the conversion process because one of his kids had special needs and he was studying in a school which was not a religious school. And he didn't want to uproot his child from the school and the social sphere in which he, he belonged to another place. And there were no religious schools with the, the, the needs that could provide the needs for his children in the city he lived. And he couldn't complete the state conversion process. One of the developments in Israel in the past few years is the creation of independent conversion courts. Conversion courts which uh, work according to Jewish halacha. They work within Orthodox communities in Israel but they're not part of the official religious establishment, creating a diverse system which is not recognized by the state, but it provides a solution for people seeking conversion in a way which is more uh, open and attentive to their needs. So, so Michael completed the conversion uh, in, in a Giyur Ka'alacha conversion court, which is independent from the Rabbanut, but he had an emotional we uh, wedding with his kids standing underneath the chuppah, and I think that like Michael there today, thousands of people in Israel who would like to have a conversion, but do not find their place within the current system. And one of the challenges is creating a system which is relevant for the needs of Israel as a Jewish state, recognizing that many of the people who are today coming to convert are already part of the Jewish people. They're not looking to be part of the Jewish people because they're already part of the Jewish community and they see themselves and others see them as, as already having a Jewish identity. But they'd like to return to Judaism also according to Jewish halacha and be recognized according to Jewish law as being Jews. And that's different. That's a different approach than someone coming from no Jewish background at all seeking a conversion. Right. Right. Can I just add something? Yes, of course. Can just... Sure. Um, I'm thinking, you know, when we think about conversion, when I think about conversion, I have the convert, the, the conversion candidate, and the whole procedure is focused on him or her and, you know, her behavior and her kind of believing and her religious conduct and her uh, identity and belonging, right? But what I've noticed is that throughout this kind of encounters, of conversion encounters, conversion agents have an opportunity to re-engage. Sometimes they are forced to re-engage with their own identity, mostly as religious Zionists. Because they are turned, they are caught up between two highly demanding 
but contradicting kind of like regimes of, of thought or uh, ideology. They really want to do good for the benefit of the Israeli state, and they believe that conversion is a crucial way of doing so. And in order to do, to do so, they must include as many converts as possible. At the same time, they do look, they do want to look at themselves in the mirror to believe in what they are doing and in their sincere usage of the tools of Jewish law. And they also have all these kind of uh, political sensibilities, even professional sensibilities. For example, a rabbinic judge at the court would be a community rabbi somewhere, right? So he needs to face his own community. Or he wants to become a dayan, a rabbinic judge at a regional court. So he needs to perform his own professional persona as someone who doesn't let go or makes it too easy for converts, like compromises too much on the stringencies. So they're caught up in so many demands that conversion forced them to deal with their own identity. So. Yeah, what, what I understood of what you said earlier during the conference is that uh, conversion uh, process is also a lot about who is Jew. Like, I think it's one of the central questions. Could you right. tell me about it a bit more? Because there is like the um, definition as the state sees it, and also like as the religion, the Jewish religion. Is that yes, yes. In, in Israel, there's two different definitions of who is a Jew. There's who is a Jew according to civil law, and who is a Jew according to religious law. So for civil law, we have the Ministry of Interior. You can be considered as being Jewish with Ministry of Interior. You can make Aliyah, you can immigrate to Israel according to the law of return and then be registered as a Jew in the population registry. But that's not necessarily the same definition that the religious establishment would use for defining who is a Jew. So there's connections between the two. They're not exclusionary. But you can be Jewish and recognized as Jewish for civil means and you can be recognized as Jewish for religious means, but not that doesn't necessarily make you Jewish for the, other, for the other government body, the Ministry of Interior or the Rabbanut. I think that one of the challenges in Israel is that conversion is turned into a kind of a, a test. You know, conversions are coming to the conversion courts and then they're kind of, they have to learn everything they need to learn and then they see it as, a, you know, people are supposed to test if they're Jewish enough to complete the process. One of the developments which is happening in independent conversion courts is more of a dialogue between the convert and the conversion court, realizing that both the conversion court is operating within the Jewish community and the convert is already part of the Jewish community and they have to discuss together what it means to be a Jew, what they're accepting as the joint commitment of the Jewish people. So, I mean, there's only there's halakhic nuances according to Jew, Jew, uh, Jewish law between the independent conversion courts and the state government conversion courts, but I think there is a fundamental difference in the way they view Jewish belonging in Jewish society. What, what would you say, like, I don't know if you can say that you have wishes, but as an anthropologist, as a uh, lawyer and activist, what do you think should be done in the coming years, decades, for this process of conversion going better uh, in Israel? It's a large question. Um, you know, I'm an ethnographer, but I'm an also an Israeli Jew, right? So I'm positioned in my own life. Um, as an ethnographer, I saw many cases in which all sides are preoccupied with questions of sincerity. And I think that if we had been able to open up other possibilities outside of orthodoxy, we would have less seen these kind of dramas where all sides are pulled to be less than sincere in what they are doing with the other side. Um, given that my wishes would have never would never happen, I'm very much pro what Elad is doing actually, you know. Uh, this is where my, my, my heart is going. Um, I think that like the liberal camp within orthodoxy is crucial not only in terms of conversion, it's crucial in terms of kashrut and in terms of marriage rituals. Um. That's that's good build up for, for what I, I want to say. I think that there are two narratives of what it means to be a Jewish state. One narrative is that there should be one state with one rabbinut and one conversion system, and it should be a melting pot for, for, for Jews, everybody going through the, the same system. And I think that this narrative has failed 
to unite the Jewish people. And it's created a lot of conflict within the political and social spheres. But I think there's another narrative for Israel as a Jewish state, and that is that Israel should be a place of belonging for all of the different Jewish communities. And that the diversity within Judaism is something that should be cherished by the state of Israel. And we should recognize that all these Jewish communities give us strength. And I think that the conversion process sits at the foundation of this. If we have a diverse system, which is decentralized and recognizes that there are different interpretations of Judaism and of Jewish law, I think it would strengthen the state of Israel. And especially as someone who believes in Jewish halakha, I think that the narrow, stringent conversion court has driven many people away. And if we have more diversity within the system, there may be the option to choose other conversion courts who may be more, more liberal than, than what I would choose. But I think more people will be uh, pulled towards the conversion system and feel that they have a place within the state of Israel and within the religious establishment. Right. So it would actually strengthen not only Israel, but even think about relationship between Israel and all kinds of Jewish diasporas which are not inclined necessarily to Orthodox Judaism. So it will also make this kind of relationship you know, more productive and healthy and dialogical in nature, I think. Absolutely.